In this lecture, we're going to have some practice in Remix with variables. Let's open Remix and create a new Solid file. Let's name it Variable Examples and press Enter. On top, as always, we need to put the version Pragma. So type Pragma Solidity 0.4.24. After that, create our contract named variable examples. Now let's define some variables. Type bool switched on equal true. Below this, type address owner equals to msg.sender. After that, create a uint code number equals to 8. Below it, let's create a byte32 variable called awesome1 equals to quotes solidity is awesome. And right after it, a string variable called awesome2 with the same text. Now let's compile and deploy our contract. Click on the compile, after that, go to the run and click on deploy. Hmm, we have successfully deployed our contract. However, we cannot see the variables and interact with them in any way whatsoever. If you remember, in the previous lectures, I told you that we can put visibility to variables as well as on functions. The default visibility when we declare a variable is internal. This means that the variables are accessible only internally inside a contract and its derivative contracts. So let's change the variables to public and see what happens. Type public here for every variable and then recompile the contract. Now before we deploy it, let's delete the previous instance and then redeploy the contract again. As you can see now, we can see all the variables are accessible and we can return the values. Remember when I said in the previous lecture that bytes are more cost efficient than string values? Let's test that out right now. Let's see how much gas does it cost calling the string and calling the bytes variable. As you can see, the bytes variable costs less gas than the string. So if you want to keep your contract cost efficient as possible, use bytes whenever you can. Now let me show you one of the traps that you can fall with integers. Let's create a new file called overflow and underflow. Press enter. On top of the file, let's specify our version pragma. After that, let's define the contract. Inside, we will specify a function called overflow. The function will be a public pure function. And it will return a unsigned integer 256. Inside, we will declare a variable uint 256 called max equals to 2 to the power of 256 minus 1. In Solidity, using double stars like that, we raise the number to the power of another number. This will give us the maximum value of uint 256. If we then return max plus 1, let's see what we get. Let's compile the contract and deploy it again. Now let's call the function overflow and see what we get. And we get the value of 0. The same goes for the other one around which is called underflow. Let's copy this function and change its name to underflow and delete everything else inside. Let's create a uint 256 called min equal to zero. 
and right below it return min minus 1. Let's recompile the contract again. After that, go to the run tab and delete the previous contract. Now deploy the contract again. Let's click on the underflow function and see what we get. We get the maximum value of unsigned integers. This is one of the most important things that you should remember about integers in Solidity and in programming overall because that can cause you a lot of trouble. After all, we're working here with money and we need to be sure that whenever we do some mathematical operations, we will not overflow or underflow our variable. Okay, so now so how we can expose our variables inside the contract and the dangers of integers and variables. Let's continue with our lectures in the next video.